Hi everyone, um, I wanted to do a quick Bible study. Um, I wanted to uh, put your attention to 2 Samuel um, chapter 5. So, starting in verse 4. Uh, verse 3 for context. Um, now, when we look at 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4 through... Um, you know, 4 through 6, I guess. Or 4 through 5. Yeah, just verses 4 and 5. Um, we see some really miraculous things. Very interesting. Now, I think we generally understand, to get to the point... Um, no, I don't have all the answers, but I just want to point out, um, we're talking about, uh, the text gets into how long King David reigned for, um, you know, in Jerusalem and in Judah and all that stuff. And it's very interesting when we look at these numbers, um, absolutely no coincidence. And it's just more evidence that, um, God works with these numbers purposely as a foreshadow of greater things to come. Um, as we know, that's the way of the Bible. That's what it does. As Ecclesiastes 1.9 states, in Ecclesiastes 3.15, for example, there's nothing new under the sun. So, um, so I just want to point this out because these numbers, it, it's just astounding. It's, you know, um, it's not numerology. We're not, we're not predicting uh, the future with numbers. We're just seeing how this is God's pattern that he uses. So when we look in 2 Samuel 5, verse 4, <coughs> it says, David was 30 years old when he began to reign. Now, 30 years old, we know, going back to the Torah, that the requirement for a high priest um, is 30 years old to start. And God stays true to his word, and that is, you know, you know the Torah, the laws of Moses, are a construct of the things to come. So, um you know, it's absolutely no coincidence that David just happened to be 30 years old when he began to reign. And of course, we know Jesus was 30 years old when he uh, was baptized with the Holy Spirit um, in the Jordan. So we know this is true because the scripture proves itself, right? And so when we look, it, it, the text continues to go into this stuff. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, in verse 5, and... In Hebron, in Hebron, he ruled over Judah seven and a half months. Um, why seven and a half? I don't know. That's interesting. That kind of puts a slant on things. I don't have the answer. But let's continue reading. And in Jerusalem, he reigns, King David reigns 33 years over all Israel and Judah. And of all the numbers, 33 years, uh, King David reigned. Make over Israel and Judah, making his entire reign 40 years. So, um, so it's very interesting. You know, King David reigned, his entire reign lasted for 40 years. Well, we know 40 in the Bible is a number of testing, of trial, of tribulation, um, stuff like that. You know, uh, the Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years. Jesus was tested. Uh, tried in the wilderness for 40 years and just to a topic search of 40 you'll find the same theme so that's interesting um, and out of all the numbers that King David ruled and reigned over Israel and Judah specifically uh, happens to be 33 years um, uh, the age uh, Jesus reached when he was crucified and um we all know three is um, the completeness of God, um, the triad, the trinity, um, the Godhead. So all these numbers are significant to the Lord. So um, I'm not saying I have all the answers. You know what this means. We can meditate on this separately. I just wanted to point this out because it just really amazed me um, when I ran into this this morning. So to recap, it, the text says King David um, was 30 years old when he began to reign which happens to be the requirement of the high priest, as told in the Torah. Um, Jesus was 30 years old when he began to, when he started his ministry. So we know this stuff, what's in the New Testament is true, because the Old Testament confirms it. And King David reigned for 40 years. So I, I, what is that a trial of, or a testing of? 
I don't know, but I guess God was testing through King David. It's very interesting. You know, we could begin to speculate and meditate on these things. And uh, King David happened to rule and reign over Israel and Judah for 33 years. Um, the, the age Jesus was crucified. So, this is how we know uh, the scriptures kind of prove themselves. Um, so, as amazing as this is, a little off topic, I don't mean to step on anyone's toes. And maybe I, I'm misspeaking, I don't have all the information. But I know there's a lot of studies going on that um, that Jesus, maybe his ministry lasted one year. And, you know, there are a lot of discrepancies in the New Testament, like translation this, this, this verse is, are taken out. Um, and we're uncovering the, that there's actually um, Hebrew uh, scriptures, Hebrew manuscripts of the Gospels older Hebrew manuscripts in the original language and uh, that's amazing but when it comes to trying to decipher well Jesus well you know when we get into all this worldly understanding and worldly information and we find ourselves um, saying well Je was Jesus's ministry really one year and stuff like that well I, I don't you know, the Bible says lean not on our own understanding because the Bible teaches this stuff ourselves. It doesn't matter if translations are wrong or things have been edited or taken out of this, the Greek that, the New Testament this, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it doesn't matter because the construct is there throughout the scriptures. So, um, I just wanted to point that out. Um, I think... Jesus' ministry was likely three and a half years because that number fits, uh, generally fits in the matrix of the scripture. The number one, one year, doesn't uh, seem to fit anything. So I just wanted to point this stuff out. Like, um, you know, this construct, this, this matrix of order or pattern God uses uh, within his story um, for humanity. So it's very interesting. I don't mean to step on people's toes. I just wanted to point this out. Um, um, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, really amazing. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on the on the uh, Jesus ministry one year, but that's what I believe. I believe it was likely three years. So, all right. Thank you for watching. God bless.